If there's one company in the world who should be good at a hybrid, it's Lexus. Them and Toyota have worked for years and years on just making hybrid cars, battery powered vehicles mixed with combustion engines at all times. And this is the pinnacle of what they've managed to do and it's absolutely outstanding. The reason that this is such an important vehicle is simply because it's a PHEV, a plug-in hybrid. You've got a big battery on the back which you can run entirely on battery should you want to or you have a two and a half liter petrol engine up the front. It's down from three and a half liter in the original sort of RX and they've refined the engine and made it lighter, made it feel lighter, but the car itself feels so substantial on the road you think you're driving a Rolls Royce. That's not a joke, you really do feel like you're in something really, really special. But also, you've got a decent battery unit in this because Toyota and Lexus, they know their way around batteries. They know how it works. And in this country, that's very important because the infrastructure here is generally fairly miserable and now getting very expensive. So when I look at the interior, apart from the beeps and things, we'll get into the beeps that this car makes. There is quite a number of beeps and bongs that you have to turn off. But the interior is beautifully designed. I mean, it's all soft, squidgy plastics and rubbers and things used that beautifully designed. I feel like I'm in something from an entirely different league. I would say that this has the best finished on the inside of the interior on the market available today, nothing else. This is the 450H, which is the H plus, which is the one you probably want. So the infotainment system actually has quite a lot of stuff in it. You can get into pretty much any setting on the car. There are some safety settings you'll have to turn off like this, this thing that warns you to look, put your eyes back on the road the whole time. It did that about five seconds after I started driving. I turned it off, I haven't heard it since. Excess speed warning is another one that I have to go into all the settings here to turn off every time I start a car. The visual and audible thing is very annoying. It bugs you all the time. It's constantly kind of needling you to make sure you stay at the speed limit. I know you're supposed to, but that noise is so annoying. Why don't you just give me a visual warning? Just a visual warning would do me fine on the screen. Don't give me the audible bit. Anyway, I have turned off every time I get in the car. Uh, moving on here, I actually have four USB ports, 3C, 1A, uh, and there's a wireless charging tray as well. So there's no limit to the amount of ways you could charge your phone or devices in the car. Wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto is also all there. Uh, it is probably one of the best interiors I've seen at any car. I'm so at home and so comfortable in the car all the time. I've never really experienced something quite so comfortable as that. Uh, worth to look, definitely. I know the price will come to that. It is the 450H Plus. There is two grades of it as well. This one starts in around the kind of 89,000, give or take. And then there's one that's a bit more expensive now, up, up into the 90s. Uh, for a PHEV, that's quite a lot of money. But, but if you don't want to go battery powered, fully battery powered, uh, PHEV is your best option, I suppose. I would prefer a hybrid version, but this is both. But you do carry around a great big battery in the back that's not really doing much for you. It just becomes a self-charging hybrid in the words of Toyota uh, during the time when the battery's empty. And that's what it is right now because I've emptied it out to test the fuel economy on it. And the fuel economy stays really good. Typical Lexus, it actually stays really good. In full battery mode, obviously using no petrol. In this mode, sitting here right now, driving on the road every day, it uses about six to six and a half liters per hundred kilometers and just seems to do it all the time. It's just, they make really good hybrids. But please, will you stop with the bongs and the beeps? Will you please ask somebody to turn everything on and then drive down the road in Ireland somewhere for a half an hour? And you will very quickly find everything annoys you because there's just so many bongs and beeps to figure out which one does what. And that happens even when you turn on and off the car. Anyway, let's have a look in the second row of seats. See what you get back there. So door handles are a problem that I'm going to get into as we go along. But right now, I'm filming this in ultra-wide so you can get a good idea just how big the back seat is. Because these are reclinable. So you can actually, somewhere here, pull a button and recline the back seat. So you can actually drive along like a limousine. It's wonderful. It encroaches into the boot a tiny bit. But if your boot's not full of stuff, it doesn't matter. So I can move that infinitely here and stop it anywhere I want. See what I mean? Anywhere I like. You could decide for yourself. You also get center armrest with cup holders built in, very complicated cup holders, and a little kind of, I don't know what, a document holder or something in there. USB ports in there as well, I think. 
it looks like a USB port to me anyway. Two USB-C ports on here, and you can control single zone climate, zone climate control in the back seat. This glass sunroof makes it very bright and airy back here. It feels like a place I want to be. That's UV tinted as well, so I'm not really feeling the heat of that sun directly on me, but the interior of the car will get warm, of course. This is a lovely place to hang out. That seat is touching me because these seats move back when you start the car and then they move forward when, you, when, you, when you're when you sitting in the driver's seat, they shift up a little bit. Speaking of door handles, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the most complicated, nonsensical way of opening and closing doors. Door handles were fine the way they were. We do not need to re reinvent them. These are frustrating because if you stop the car and put it in park, and a passenger wants to get out, they can't. They can't just press the button to open the door. You have to unlock the door for them, or you have to stop the engine and make it happen. Otherwise, they have to pull the handle twice, once, twice to open the door, in manual version. BMW, Lexus, a couple of others have reinvented these, way, these ways of opening and closing doors, and it's completely unnecessary. Go back to door handles. There was nothing wrong with pulling a handle. It was lovely, it was subtle, it wasn't a problem, it wasn't hard, it wasn't difficult. I understand your need for electronic touching, but honestly, you, it is totally unnecessary. Frustrating is what I would call that, but at the same time, you know, you could do something with it yourself. Look after that idea, I'm telling you, that's gonna bother people. So this car to drive is one of the more rewarding cars on the market. It might be my favorite car in the last 10 years to actually drive. It's just a beautiful thing. It just gets on with its job perfectly well. Silent, cosseted from the road, perfect suspension. I don't feel bumps or lumps in the road, it just aren't there. It gets on with that job far better than I've seen more other SUV or other SUVs do it including things like Land Rover and the Discovery and all that, they, they just don't seem to be able to cushion out the way this cushions out the road. Even though most of the Land Rovers and Range Rovers suspensions actually developed right here in Ireland. I've never been as comfortable in a car as I've been in this. It just, it just works for me. It's a big SUV, yes. It is a PHEV and I haven't bothered to charge it today. So it gets on with being a self-charging hybrid then. You just put your foot down. And the two engines combine, well, the motor and the engine combine, to give you a big boost. Tons of pork, tons of power, you can overtake things. It's lovely. Also has active cruise control, it's all right. It's not the best one, but it's smooth, I have to say that. It keeps you well within the lanes, uh, constantly warning you about cars in your blind spots. You do have to get into the settings a little bit. It has overtake prevention turned on by default and things. So that you turn on little, turn off little settings to stop the car doing stuff. Get familiar with those settings because more and more of these cars, not just Lexus, but many other brands are bringing out ones that have tons of settings to change and alter, like the driver uh, tiredness monitor that's here, uh, like the, the uh, speed limit system that's turned on by default. You know, there's just tons of things that are turned on within the car system that will undoubtedly annoy you. Still, I think the Lexus might be my favorite car of the last 10 years. Yes, it's not cheap. I get it. I 100% agree with you. Cars are overpriced by a long way. In actual fact, according to a done deal survey, cars are up 13% on the price of them last year. So they're, they're going up. And I've told you and warned you about this for years, that car prices are rising all the time. But if you're going to buy in at some point and you don't want to use the charging network because God forbid you'd want to actually charge your electric car on the street, which is becoming very expensive and very haphazard in places, particularly on the ESB network. Uh, it's just very, very lackluster, haphazard sort of charging at the moment. And this only takes a, a type two connector. So like a home connector is what this takes. So you could happily charge this at home and never use a charge point, thanks be to God. You won't have to burn your lunch break or come along after, you know, we all like to sit at charge points for 45 minutes and go waiting for someone to get off the charger so you can use the charger, which is the most insane thing I've ever seen. And I've seen it firsthand. A man absolutely screamed us out of it one day, would not get off the charger. He'd been there for an hour and 20 minutes. No, not a hope. I'm staying in this charger and I reach 100% and that's, that's it. That's all he was going to do. 
If you don't want to do that, and who in the name of God wants to do that, this is your buddy. Self-charging hybrids, PHEVs, ones with longer range built in, that's really good. This one does about 60 kilometers, and you probably will go a little bit further, actually. But I'll tell you what, let's pull over and have a good discussion about this self-charging stuff, electric stuff, hybrid stuff, and whether Lexus actually will be bothered doing an electric car at all. So that is my thoughts then on the Lexus uh, RX 450H Plus. Buy the Plus one, don't bother with the premium one. There's a, there's a one above this, model above this, has different alloys and stuff on it. I think it's one of Lexus' finest hours, really is. They've done superb work over the years. Very conservative Japanese company bring out another car and it's quietly brilliant. That's essentially it. Listen, thanks very much for watching this far into the video. I hope you hit the subscribe button. There's PayPal links and Patreon links there for you to support the channel as well. And as a quick kind of update, I've been diagnosed with cancer, it's head and neck cancer that I have. Uh, and I'll be going in for treatments in the next four weeks or so for surgery. I'm quite positive with the treatments, it should be okay, I hope, fingers crossed, everything goes according to plan, it should be fine. Hey look, thank you very much for watching along this far. Please hit the subscribe button. There's a list of links down below for PayPal and Patreon. If you really want to support the channel, that'd be really brilliant. And a quick update to those who know I've been diagnosed with cancer. So head and neck cancer is what I've been diagnosed with. I'm going in for an MRI this coming week and physiotherapy checkup and a fitness check. The operation is quite a heavy one. Uh, and I'm going in for surgery to cure this first. I have to go and get a PEP scan. So there's all kinds of things going on uh, over the next month. I'm in good health. Uh, I'm physically very fit. So I should be okay with this one, I hope. Uh, some people come in the background. But it's an update, really. I don't know where we're going. We're waiting to get all the information together so I can meet with the surgical team and see what the actual prognosis of this whole thing is going to be. But surgery should be in somewhere late June, early July. And then I'll know what's going to happen next. This could be... Uh, the end, essentially, of, of me, or it could be uh, the beginning of a new chapter. I'm not sure which one it is, but thank you very much for watching along. I'm going to keep making videos. I'm trying to make enough videos to carry it through for the next six to eight weeks, uh, which is quite difficult. There's quite a lot of videos, but there is a number of videos coming out, and I will try to do that. But if you can support the channel, it'd be really good, because YouTube literally hates me. Uh, I'm not sure why YouTube hates me so much. I put up a video on... Um, TikTok, which did 350,000 views over a weekend, no problem at all. And I put the same video up on YouTube and it got 4,000 views. It's just, it's just a platform that seems to hate what I do. Maybe I don't jump up and down enough. Maybe I don't put my clip down enough. Maybe I don't know what I don't do. But whatever it is, uh, hopefully you will stick around um, uh, as a subscriber and watch to the end of the videos or share them. The free thing to do is share them. If you want to support the channel, like I said, there's Patreon and PayPal down below. I don't know when I'll be able to work again. This coming week is going to get very busy. The week after I have to do PEP scan and then I have to do a fitness test and I have to do surgical meets and all that sort of stuff. So Bumblebee I'm still going to do this year. It's only two weekends away now. It's the weekend after next. Uh, so I'm still going to do that no matter what the surgery says. <laughs> I'm going to do Bumblebee. I can't miss out on Bumblebee. There's so many beautiful people and, and uh, you know the families you meet and the kids and stuff we do and the charity and we raise so much money every year for that and, and, and we put our heart and soul into it every year and it's worth a round of applause at least. But anyway, please support if you can, share the video, subscribe, do the usual things. Thank you very much for watching and these words mean more now than they've ever meant in the past. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I'll see you on the far side. <laughs> Random woman in the background.